a value coefficient of x cubed in such and such and such. Okay? It's a simple idea. Is it, do you need to twist it? Do Oh, I don't care if I'm not in it. Wait, is that, does that mean the boy's not in there? No, 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 it's like, you're fine, just right? stay there, don't move from there. I'm not going to stay there. Okay, so. All we have to do here, really, is make sure we understand how binomial coefficients work, just on their own, and then understand how they interact with these guys, okay? So we're going to start from here, about as simple as you can get, and then we'll go all the way. Okay. Now, I am actually going to, because this is sufficiently simple, okay, I am actually going to write more or less the entire expansion that we've got here, because it will be helpful for when we do these next questions, okay? I'm not going to write 14641, even though I could, because if I made this question 40, like to the power of 40, then you can't answer it with 14641. You're going to have ridiculous numbers. You're going to have to rely on this technique. Okay? So what are the coefficients? Right? We're on the fourth row of Pascal's triangle. So the first term should be 4 C0. Right? Uh, now I've got the x up the front, so I tend to write it in decreasing order of powers of x. I mean, you don't have to, but we tend to. Right? So of course the highest power here will be oh. x to the 4. Right? That's my pattern. right? So now I go to the next coefficient and then my power drops down. I go to the next coefficient and my power goes down. Now I could keep going but you can see I don't need to. I don't need to keep going anymore. right? Because all of these terms after this I'll have... Oops, that's a 2, sorry. All my terms after this will be irrelevant to answering this question. Do you see that? Like, I'm never going to get an x cubed back. That's it, right there. There's no more x cubed terms that are going to appear. Okay. So therefore, I, I have my answer, I guess, now. It's, it's 4c1. You just chuck it in your calculator. If it was 40 to the power of 40, right? you just go, now, think for a second. Right? If I'm on the 40th row, okay, then this term is going to be not x to the 4. It would be x to the 40. Do you agree with that? That's the first one. So I would have to go all the way down to here until I get to the x cubed term. Now therefore, what will that coefficient out the front be? We'll do the easy part first. It'll be 40, because I'm on the 40th row. C something. What will the something be? Now, look at your patterns. Look at your patterns. For instance, you can see this number doesn't change, right? 4c, 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 etc. The numbers that do change are this guy, right? C what? And C that coefficient, right? <laughs> I've got 0 and 4. Then I get 1 and 3. Then I get 2 and 2. Do you see the pattern yet? Okay. So this number here and the power should add up to whatever row I'm on. In this particular example, you see that? My next one would be 4C1, 1, 1. And it'll be... Sorry, no, I take that back. 4C3, I'm going across. Yeah. And x to the 1. So they would add up to whichever row I'm on. What row am I on? 40. I'm on row 40. So I should have 37 here. Right? Oh. Which will be some enormous number. Because there are many ways to choose 37 objects out of 40. So you wouldn't get 40. But you can see the strength of doing this rather than writing 1, 4, 6, 4, 1 is that it generalizes. It's a more versatile approach. Do you understand that? Now, what's different here? What's different here? I've purposely chosen the same power so you can see the idea from above, but what's different? Coefficient. Okay. So these coefficients, I'll put them in red, 4C0, 4C1, 4C2, all the same, all the same, because I am still on the same row of Pascal's triangle. So I still have a 4C0, and I'll still have a 4C1, and I'll still have a 4C2. But what I multiply by is going to be a little more complicated because these guys are more complicated than these guys, right? For starters, remember how I had x to the 4 here, right? That's because it's x to the 4. I don't have x here. I have 2x, right? And the 2 comes along for the right, okay? So it's 2x and the whole thing gets raised to the power of 4. Plus, okay, now I'm going to need some more space here shove over my 4c2. When I go to the next term, two things happen. Number one, this 2x to the 4, you see how he drops down a power. So he'll be 2x to the 3. You see that? Right? But at the same time, and it's disguised in the first question, because 1 to the power of anything is still 1, as this guy decreases in power, 
This guy increases in power. In fact, right here, there's a three to the naught hiding. But I just didn't write it because three to the naught is one. That means that here, as I increase, there's going to be a three to the one there. Okay? I'll do the next one just so I establish the pattern for C2. Right? It's going to be 2 to the x squared. Yeah? 3 squared. 3 squared. I'm just it plus. It is times. Okay? So you can see there are three components to each term in my expansion. Right? Number one, there's just the binomial coefficients themselves. Number two, there's the first bit and whatever power I have of that. And then there's the, well, I picked a bad example. <laughs> there's the first bit, second bit, and then there's the third bit, right? Which comes from the other term in the binomial. Binomial, remember, two, okay? So now just having a look at this, what are the, what's the term I'm interested in? Just like in part one, wrong color. Just like in part one, I don't need to go any further, right? I'm not going to get, there's an x to the four, there's the x cubed, there's an x to the two. I'm not going to get any more x cubed terms coming out of this, right? So I simply want to grab this guy. Now what's the coefficient? It's a bit more complicated than just 4C1, isn't it? Right? I do have 4C1, but what else has come along for the ride? Three. There's the 2 cubed, which is 8, and then there's the 3, so that's 24. And 4C1 is 4, so that looks like 96 to me. So 96 would be the coefficient of x cubed in this guy. There'd be 96 x cubed and some other, other stuff which I don't really worry about. Okay, now we're prepared for this guy. Now this is more difficult, and unlike these other ones, we're gonna have to be a little more careful before we just stop writing out terms. Let's give this a go. You're gonna need a wide page here, all right? Here, I'm going to write, let's see, I'm on the second row, second row, so I'm gonna get 2c naught times what? x squared, very good. Plus 2c1 x plus 2, sorry, 2c2, that 2 should be a lot. 2c2 on its own, because it's, it's times 1. Isn't it? So there is my expansion of this guy. Okay. So there's that expansion. Okay. Now when you have a look at this next part, let's give this guy. I'm on the third row, okay, so I'm going to go 3c0. Okay. The first term will not be 2x to the 4, because my power has dropped down. you see that? Okay. In fact, it will be 2x cubed. That's my first one. Okay. How many other terms I've got here? I've got a three, but I don't have any of those. It's three of them more. So I can move on to the next one. Three C one. Okay. And I'm gonna have two X all squared. And then I get one three hanging on for the ride. Three, two, the one. Okay. Then I'm almost finished, I'm halfway there. I'm gonna get three C two. How many two X's do I have? Just one. Just the one. But I have an extra three. And then here comes my last term. How many two x's do I have? Zero. None of them. Two x in power of naught. But I have three of these guys. Right? Three cubed. Okay. And that expands our second binomial. This monstrous thing here. That's the worst curly brace ever. Okay. Now, have a look at this now. Because we have a binomial times another binomial, this has dramatically increased the difficulty and complexity of what we're looking at, right? Because, for instance, have a look at these guys. There are no x cubed terms here, right? There are none, okay? But if I take, for instance, this guy, right? And I multiply him by a particular term in the second expansion, I will get an x cubed. Do you see that? Which terms am I going to match up? This is x squared, so I want an x to the one from over here. You see that? And where is it? It's uh, there. There it is, okay? So I'm going to multiply those two together, and that'll give me an x cubed term. That's not the only time it happens. It happens again. Here's an x term, new color. I want to pair it with an x squared term in the other expansion, namely this guy. <laughs> right? And then lastly, <laughs> have I got enough colors? I do. Here's a constant, no x's, but if I pair him with an x cubed term, then I'm there. You can see, by the way, the colors may <coughs> do the colors help. You can as well see there's this symmetry happening. Do you see that? You're not going to miss any terms because you're like, bam, bam, bam. And you can also see why there's one term hanging over there that doesn't get used. Why is that? Because um, it's, it's, it's a constant. What you would have to match with is an x cubed term which doesn't exist. 
okay? So I've accounted for all of these, I'm done, okay? Now all I need to do is just assemble the answer, okay? So I'm gonna keep it color coded as best as I can, okay? Uh, in fact, I'm just gonna leave that off because all I want is, I don't need any X cubed, okay? I just want the coefficients out of each one, okay? So let's have a look at this black one. What am I gonna get? From here, I get 2C naught. And then from here, careful, I've got 3C2, what else have I got here? Times I've got a 2, two and I have a 3 squared. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. yeah. Times 2 times 3 squared. You right with that? Mm -hmm. Just the coefficient. I don't need to worry about the x's, okay? Let's have a look at this next guy. Over here, I've got, I've got a 2C1. Should be able to start to take advantage of some patterns here, right? Then I've got, here's my green, I've got 3C1. How many twos have I got? I've got a two squared, don't I? And I've got a single three. And then last one, here we go. Out of these red terms, I'm getting, whew, that's two C2. There's three C naught. And how many twos do I have? Uh, I have two cubed, three, which is eight. eight. Right? I've got three of them, sorry. It's okay. All right, so now, that's it. I mean, I've got to evaluate them, obviously, but I've done all the hard work. I have expanded these first two <coughs> binomials, which gives you this royal mess, but if you take your time with it, be logical, use some colors to help you out, you can see the bits that need to match up, and then you get your numbers out at the end. Shall we just quickly evaluate it? What do we get? 2C0 is 1. 3C2 will be 3. three. Times 2 times 9 is 18. 18. Plus 2C1 is going to be 2. 3C1 is going to be 3. Times 4 times 3 is 12. 2C2 is 1. 3C0 is 1. And 2 cubed is 8. So you get 134. Okay, we, yeah. So this is what? 54? 54 plus 72 plus 8. 72, yes, plus 8. Which sure enough gives us... 134. I just want to